welcome. The weather finally got nice here in Vermont, May 1st, and we're finally gonna get to an electrical upgrade. We plan to do more boondocking in the 2280BH ESP, so we need more battery power. So the plan is to remove the Group 24 and put in two Group 27s, and of course, two new battery boxes. I've got a power on off switch, some adapters for cutting wire, splicing wire, hold. I bought some new battery cable. This is four gauge. And I also got a power meter that I'm gonna run inside of the pop-up so I can see the health of my batteries. And one more thing, take a look. I bought this little tiny cute propane generator inverter. To get started, I gotta take this bed, slide it back, get it out of the way, so I can access the front basket area. I don't really have a plan. I'm just gonna install it. So let me go put my lawn tractor away. get started on this project. It's a lawn tractor. At least that's what I told my wife. So I know I am not alone when I say campground prices have gotten sky high. We plan to do more boondocking. State parks, wherever we can find a plot of land that's pretty, do some remote. We are still gonna hit campgrounds by the way but just fewer. Propane is off. Get out of here, battery. So to go to the bigger batteries, I had to get rid of my Group 24 dual box and buy two single Group 27 boxes. So I'm just gonna do a rough fit, get these close to where they're supposed to be and then make the necessary adjustments. Now I'm adding more tongue weight by doing these. These batteries aren't light, right? So I have another mod coming and I'll share that in another video that I think you'll find interesting. It's a go-kart kind of day. So the plan is, I'm not gonna bolt anything down until I got everything assembled and I like the way it's laying. Then I'll bolt it down. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? <laughs> so when I went shopping locally at Walmart, I only found black, so we'll have to live with it. So if I'm right, by wiring these parallel, just negative to negative, positive to positive, it maintains 12 volts and it doubles the capacity of the battery. So I should have, I believe, 200 amp hours, which should be good for, I think, roughly day and a half, two days. So negative. And negative. Ah. And then this one goes to negative over here tops have vents so the cable can just go through the tops. Sorry about the go-kart noises. I'm not gonna tell them to stop though. They're having too much fun. Positive. Ah. Hate that sound. 12.74. So we need to start charging. I'm gonna plug the camper in and see how well it does with charging. If it's too slow, I might have to buy an external charger. All right, we got shore power attached. We're just plugged into the house. No generator, let's see where we're at. We were at 12.74. Let's see where we're at now. Ooh, 13.06. Man, that's weird, it jumped up to 15. 13.10, it's, it's, oh, it's doing great. 
there's a little flash of 15.26. It's gotta be the shore power, like the juice going to the battery. That's good, it's charging quickly. I think we're in good shape. So it's been about 15 minutes and we're at 14 volts. That's pretty quick. This is gonna work. Well, that's pretty nice, I got the covers on. Wires coming out, the ones going to this battery pass through these vents. Works perfectly. So I think I'll mount the switch somewhere around here. <laughs> Huge terminals, just like the battery. So these little panels on the side come out. You need a pair of pliers though to pop them out. Oh, and you pick which side you want. See how there's a recess? I'm sure you grab it with pliers and just break it. It's not gonna be long enough. I need to go buy a new cable. I'll be back. I have returned. All right, I made a decision on where to mount this thing. I'm gonna put it right on the front of the box in front of the positive terminal. Positive cables are gonna mount on this side and then the positive terminal coming off of the switch is gonna go up through the vent hole on the cover and then boom, straight on the terminal itself. So I think that'll be clean, it'll be easy to reach and it'll be protected pretty good. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna break off the tabs and wire it up. Gotta think about this. I mean, once you break off the tabs, they're done. I guess you could glue them on, but that'd be irritating. So I'm just gonna use the back plate from the switch as my template. And I'll mark four holes, drill it, and mount it. All right, let's see if she mounts up. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, but they're so long, they're gonna hit the battery. Those need to be shortened. I need them short. All right, I'm just marking where I'm gonna cut. So the trick to cutting a, a bolt is you put the nut on, cut and then remove the nut and it cleans the threads as it's coming off. Makes a big difference. We're gonna go clean the head first and then remove the nut. Nice and smooth, like factory. Cleaning threads. Nice. That will work. See, and I can thread it back on. Yay. All right, each one of these screws has been shortened. They're soft as butter. I had to be really careful. Should be okay though. See, it's gonna mount right on the front. I got one screw in. I'll put the rest of them on. I think it's gonna look great and work great, that's important too, but looks, you know, sometimes it's better to look good than to feel good, so. That's not going anywhere. No need to over tighten, snug it up. We have an on off switch. 100% power off so the batteries don't die from some kind of bleeding short or connection or whatever have you but it's always wise to be able to kill your batteries quickly and easily with a simple switch look at that thing ha i'm sorry it is really starting to get dark out here i'm losing my light i haven't mounted the box yet i'm finishing up this switch let's toss the battery in oh that's nice i might put a i have a flat piece of styrofoam it's, it's like real soft foam rubber, but it's very porous. I might put that in the box just to keep the battery away from uh, these bolt heads. I don't think they're bad, but you know, vibration, I don't want to wear a hole in the battery. That'd be terrible. I'm gonna go grab that now. Here it is, styrofoam. I think I'm just gonna set it right here. Oh, it's perfect. And that'll keep the battery gapped from the wall of the box and away from those screw heads. So right now, because this switch is off, there's no power in this line. The power is here, but it dead ends right there at that switch. 
kind of nice to work with it this way, right? All right, let's get our parallel hook back up again. It's a nice way to work on a battery, to be able to actually kill it before you play with live connections. Nothing sparking. I feel safe around my propane tanks. <laughs> That's bright. Look at that, snapped in place. We're lined up. I'm feeling good about this. So last step, I wanna attach the boxes to the trailer, put my straps in to keep the covers on. And this is it right here. And here's my switch. Oh, I just heard it click inside. Ah, and it turned off. <laughs> that's so cool nice all right i gotta clean up but that's it guys so i gotta put my meter in but i'm gonna have to do that tomorrow i've run out of daylight and i think i gotta make dinner for the kids the wife's not here they're probably hungry <laughs> always hungry all right thanks for watching i will see you tomorrow night i'll be back <sighs> dual group 27 batteries uh. Oh, and don't forget, we got to try out this thing. See how well it charges those batteries. See you tomorrow.